Good afternoon, folks. I'm Chief Tom Hackney, Chief of Detectives for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. At 1121 this morning, patrol officers with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office were dispatched to the pretrial detention facility in reference to an inmate that jumped from a balcony. That subject was transported by Jacksonville Fire Rescue to Shands Hospital, and he was pronounced dead at 1155 this morning. The inmate in question is 31-year-old Travis Fryer, who was incarcerated on September 27th of this year in reference to an aggravated, char or aggravated assault charge. His family has been made aware of his death. Mr. Fryer was being housed in a dormitory that houses both inmates that are at a self-harm risk and those who have trouble getting along with other inmates. Mr. Fryer was considered a suicide risk. I just want to kind of remind you that this is an investigation that is still ongoing and still very fluid. Our preliminary findings, though, are that Mr. Fryer was at the Duval County Courthouse this morning regarding his criminal case and his aggravated assault charge. That case was passed and he was returned to the pre-child detention facility. As per their normal protocol, those inmates are handcuffed and shackled as they're brought from the courthouse back into the pre-child detention facility, taken to that self-harm dorm. He was in the process of being unhandcuffed and unshackled, was in the care and control of a corrections officer at the time. When the shackle was removed and the handcuff was removed, the inmate, Mr. Fryer, jumped from the officer's control and ran up a flight of stairs to the second tier of that dormitory balcony, jumped from that balcony onto the concrete floor below. Due to this being an in-custody death with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, it's just a matter of our normal protocol. Members of the JSO cold case team are investigating this death. I mentioned before this is still ongoing and still fluid. It happened just a few hours ago, but those are our preliminary findings, and I can take a couple questions. How far did he fall? 12 feet, 11 inches. Would he have access to the stairs after he got handcuffed anyway? After he would, would have been handcuffed, he would have been placed immediately into his cell and the door locked behind him. But as per their protocol, the, the unhandcuffing and shackling is done right outside the door. He broke from that officer's control and ran up the stairs. So you're saying he was considered a suicide risk? He was considered a suicide risk, yes. Is, that, is anything being done with the correctional officer who's with him at the time? Uh, that officer has been interviewed, and as part of our normal protocol, um, he will have the opportunity to speak to you, counselors. But at this point in time, that part is still kind of ongoing. But he had a who was that officer? But he, but he did not get in trouble at all. He's been cleared, did everything. Fine. Well, that, again, this case is still ongoing. Our preliminary findings are that his his actions were within their protocol. But again, that that will be continually reviewed and reviewed at a later date. Who's that officer? Who is the officer? I, I'll get the name for you. I did not have that name, but I will get the okay. officer's name for you. From strike him? Did no, there was there was no physical altercation. He simply broke from the corrections officer's grasp as the, uh, the handcuff was removed. And, and ran upstairs. And from the area where he ran and then the flight of stairs, were there any guards or security in that area? You know, this is in a this is in a large open dormitory um, with several several uh, of the cells on the lower floor and several cells on the, on the upper floor, which are right off the balcony. Uh, his cell was in the lower floor. He was outside the, the doorway to his cell, ran up the stairs to the second tier and jumped from that location. What happened at the courthouse this morning? He had uh, part of his court hearing was was at the courthouse this morning, and that was passed. So he was actually at the courthouse as part of his case, returned from the courthouse uh, over to the pre child detention facility. So if he wanted to any day, you're putting him in and out of the cell, he could attend to this any time he wanted, if you really wanted to. Yeah. The, these officers who are these uh, inmates who are in these self harm forms, they're watched very closely. They don't have the ability to have uh, shoes or glasses or, or anything. They're constantly checked. They're in. Uh, in, in cells that have glass in them, and there's, there are there is a corrections officer inside the dormitory at all times, so they're they're really never allowed to be alone. And when they're being moved like that, they are being moved by an officer and, and not left out to wander about. Did, did he die head first? He hit his head. Did he land straight on the floor? He landed straight on the floor and hit his head. And did that he that he like, did he dive? He he did a, a, a head first dive off the second head first dive, second and that's tier. got 12 feet. Yeah. Has 12 he ever feet, tried this before? Inches. Has he ever tried this before? Not at, at, since we've had him in September 27th. What made him a suicide risk? Uh, his statements to the professionals at the jail. Were there many witnesses beyond, I guess, the officer and what goes on there? Like any number of witnesses? There were other inmates that were housed within that same dorm that, that saw what, what occurred. So and how did he get to, to them? How did he get to the balcony? Were there not bars or anything? No, the, the, 
the stairwell leads up to uh, a balcony on the second floor. That's how you get into the cells on the second floor. This happened on the rear end of the jail now? This happened on the sixth floor west. And there was one guard and one person, and one, one corrections officer and this inmate. There, he was, he was one, there was one on one. One on one, yes. Okay. Any other questions? Are any security okay. risks looking, being looked into because of this? The, the whole thing is being looked into, but again, it's, it's ongoing. From, from the surface in our preliminary investigation or, or the policies we're following, but, but again, that's still on. So you're saying with the officer, the preliminary findings were that he did everything under protocol, that he didn't do anything that was out of the ordinary. That is correct. But that could lead to policy changes? Any any time that there's a death like this, the, the whole thing is looked at. The policy is looked at as well to see if there's any changes that need to be made. But again, this is two hours into, into this. Any more questions? Is the corrections officer, is he on any kind of administrative like they do? At this time, no. No, okay. Can you say how many people normally stay in that area? I, I, I would be speaking out of terms because I'm not sure. I've got a question. Sure. Uh, that area, that glass enclosed area, is that what you would consider a suicide watch? That, that is part of, part of that, that high risk dorm that's in there. Those that are considered suicide risks are, are placed in there. So he was housed at a high risk yes. dorm? Yes. Right. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.